Cedric Price to introduce him, uh, 1934 to 2003, um, shown here in an affectionate cartoon on the uh, front of architectural design, inflating himself after the manner of his beloved inflatable structures, uh, was the son of uh, one of the architects of the wonderful 1930s Odeons on his father's side, and his mother was a um, daughter of an upper-middle-class industrial family in the Potteries area of uh, Staffordshire uh, in the Midlands of uh, England. And so he's quite, uh, that which sounds like quite an establishment background. He then went to Cambridge uh, to study architecture and then to the Architectural Association. Uh, if, however, that sounds like establishment, it's a bad introduction to Price, because that's about the last word that he would ever have wished to have applied to, I suspect. Uh, his work, above all, was about challenging the brief itself. So, when in the 1950s and 60s, the UK was persuaded that increasing industrialization would bring down the amount of work anybody had to do and bring up the amount of time they had off, uh, the, the world was obsessed with what the structures would be that would meet these new leisure needs. And uh, this is a very early example of the Leisure Centre uh, in Billigan Forum, a 1960s one. Uh, and this is a very early example of the Municipal Civic Theatre, the Belgrade in Coventry, 1958. Um, and you can see that these are buildings which are trying to meet this need for leisure, but in a very, um, every building does what it needs to do in a very uh, purpose-built way, and doesn't have much multivalence, it doesn't have other things it can do. Price, in his Fun Palace scheme with Joan Littlewood, the theatre director, uh, designed uh, what should be a leisure centre, a theatre, and everything else. Uh, so you have uh, a, a building which is um, essentially an industrial structure which can be changed by users as much as they want and changed uh, by the management using these crane tracks along the roof. You can move, move very substantial pieces of infrastructure uh, whilst the building's still in use. And it's very obvious that this has much more to do with uh, much less to do with things like the Belgrade Theatre in Coventry than to do with um, oil rigs of the 1960s, for example, which have much stronger kind of uh, affinity for the architecture here. Similarly, when it came to universities, he looked at one of the major things that was going on in the 1950s and 60s in Britain, which is massive university expansion, and he thought, this isn't good enough. This is Keele University. And um, it's... Uh, he looked at these kind of pretty lawns and these nice little modernist buildings with no offence to anybody. He looked at the new universities and he said, uh, the brief here is wrong. We're producing small uh, Oxford and Cambridge clones outside all our provincial towns, when what we need is something much more radical. This is Kiel. The nearest surroundings of Kiel are uh, the potteries, this area which had been torn apart by industry, particularly mining, gutting the countryside and turning it into this extraordinary wasteland. Uh, and lots and lots of industrial infrastructure, which was just becoming unneeded through the collapse of the industries concerned. Uh, so Price looked at this area and thought, what we need here is not Kiel, this tiny, pretty little university. We need something at an industrial scale. And that's where he came up with the Pottery's Think Belt, which took some of these disused railway lines and turned them into this massive engineering scale project of uh, industrial uh, teaching industrial disciplines to people of all ages, part-time and full-time. Uh, and you can see on this map of the Pottery's Think Belt that he includes Keele University. The whole of the rest of this is his scheme for this university on train tracks, and that, satirically bounded, bounded and small and uh, pathetic, is the current existing attempts to, to cater for these new needs of higher education. Uh, as with all his schemes, there's occasional moments where there's something quite um, light-hearted about it. So, for example, um, he has uh, the teaching done in things called faculty sidings, uh, which has a slight satirical sound to it to me about kind of academics always being on side tracks. Um, and uh, if you ever hear people saying that Price wasn't inter interested in aesthetics, it's perhaps something we'll discuss, but I strongly disbelieve that and disagree with it. Uh, there's a very strong aesthetic of these almost lunar or post-nuclear uh, post disaster landscapes with these interventions dropped into them as those from spaceships. Um, and one of the things that this exhibition is doing, though, is to put this whole development of Price's into its 1960s context, because 
Uh, this is another photo of Kiel, and it's not a photo of Kiel as Price uh, wished to, um, to package up Kiel as this conservative little Oxbridge. This is Kiel experimenting with uh, CCTV education, which was something that Price himself was very interested in as a technology. Um, so uh, there's a kind of um, agenda behind some of the exhibition of recontextualizing him so that you can see how very radical some of his ideas were, but how they all fit into a wider context of other things going on at the time. And that's something uh, that Rem Koolhaas has observed in the following uh, quotation. He said, uh, the 1960s are very compelling in two ways. And this has been something of a keynote quotation for this exhibition. On the one hand, there's the scale and the sincerity and earnestness of the effort, and on the other, the ruthlessness of the questioning of that very effort by people such as Price. Presumably, there is an internal connection between the two. He could only be ruthless because the period produced strong and compelling forms. So this exhibition takes its keynote from that and examines uh, the ways in which he is um, developing on um, the strong and compelling activity that's already going on in the 1960s. 